Hey everybody, it's the Terry Sullivan Show. Today's guest, CEO of Christian Community Action, Gilbert Montez. Now, the one of a kind, and thank goodness for that, it's Terry Sullivan. <laughs> How's it going over there? It's going great. You know, I got to tell you, and this is a real compliment, uh, out of all the guitarists that I know, you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. You're doing good. You're looking good. Well, thank you. You're playing well. You always play. Hey, who who's the who is the uh, the star that you've played with, played for, opened up for? Who is your favorite one? My favorite one? Oh, uh, b -b 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 I can't remember offhand. There's, I mean, put me on the spot. It's obviously going to be the last thing that I did recently that really stands out. But I've, I've opened for quite a few really fun people. There was one guy way back, uh, I don't know if you remember, a country artist named David Baldwin. He had a song called I Got a, I Got a Thinking Problem. And anyway, we'd done a show with him and just one of the, another really nice guy. We were on his bus. Actually, he was on an RV. We had an RV. He was starting up at the time, and we just all hung out and had a really nice time. Yeah. Or so I heard the next day. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't you like to remember things like that? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. You, can, you remember them now because you got a good wife to keep you, keep you stable. Yeah, she keeps telling me to write a book, but first got to learn to read. Yeah. <laughs> I heard he was the good Terry. Yeah, that's what he would say. He wouldn't say that in front of me, though. You got money for, you got money for Gil? <laughs> Anytime, though, Terry. Anytime. That's all it costs you? That's all. That's I can match that. <laughs> I, got, I got Gilbert Montez on the show today. Gil, it's so good to have you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for having me. You eat in the barbecue house more than you should. You have more barbecue than you should ever have in your system. I love barbecue. Yeah. I have the Texas Monthly Barbecue app on my phone. And so everywhere I go, I look for good barbecue. And there's some of the best stuff right here. I appreciate it. It's yeah. always good to have you. It's always good to see you. You always have a smile. Always in a good mood. And uh, that, that goes a long way with me. So, Gil, you're the, the, CE, the CEO of uh, CCA. Right. That's hard to say, isn't it? Well, it is for me. <laughs> Not for most people, but it is, it is for me. How long have you been in that spot? Uh, in April, it would be three years. Now, uh, before that, uh, you were the CEO of uh, Buckner Children. No, well, no, I worked there. Oh, I, I, got I was it. the okay. chief of staff for the uh, president there. President and I go way back to, I knew him as a teenager, and oh, okay. we always wanted to work together, so... I went to work for him. I went. I was there about eight years. The mm -hmm. Buckner Children's Home. Uh, they do work in Texas and all, really all over the world. Yeah, very yeah. well known. Very yes. successful organization. Exactly. And great, a good one. Great. Yeah, it's a great place. I really enjoyed my time there. Yeah. So three years ago, you you, you were a candidate for the CEO of CCA. What does CCA stand for? Christian Community Action. And this year we celebrate our 50th year uh, in the community of serving families in the area. It's a. It's a. It's a well-known organization. It's a great organization, uh -huh. and you've made it better. So we want to get into that, Gil. Thank so you. You, they hired you as a CEO. Mm -hmm. Were you were you excited? I mean, were, were you had? Did you have mixed emotions or? Well, it was one month into the pandemic, and uh, family and friends kind of questioned my sanity, as they usually do, and yeah. they said, "What are you doing? I mean, you know, are yeah. you going in the pandemic?" And uh, but what I found very quickly was that the heart of what CCA has been known for for all these years is truly evident in the staff. They have hard, very passionate staff uh, that love serving people. And so when I got there, April of 2020, uh, that current staff had already been uh, adjusting to the pandemic and mm -hmm. still caring for people, whether yeah. it was providing food, whether it's providing rent, money for rent or utilities, yeah. uh, or, you know, during the pandemic for, for over a year and a half, 
uh, we had volunteers who delivered food to about 110 seniors in our community. Right. Every right. week for mm -hmm. a year and a half, every Monday. So it was those kinds of things that attracted me and, and helped reveal <clears throat> the heart of what CCA has been over the years. Yeah. So now before Buckner, you, you, you came out of the corporate world, you were with GTE uh, right. for how many years? Uh, about 15 years, well, a total in the corporate world, almost 20, but for 15 of those with GTE. And, that, and really that's how we got, my family and I, we got to the Metroplex. Mm -hmm. I was originally from uh, West Texas in San Angelo, that's yeah. home for me. And uh, we moved up here and uh, my wife, uh, the, she said, uh, you'll understand this, because she said, hey, so you're the reason we're having to leave home? She said, <laughs> right? so wherever I get a teaching job, she's a teacher at the time, she said, that's where we're gonna live. And so we found a place, she got a job with Louisville ISD. Right. So we live in the area and have since 94. Mm -hmm. And so- Do you uh, still have family in San Angelo? Uh, a few, yes, a few family members still there. My, my uh, dad passed away, uh, in fact, this year is 10 years and my mom now lives in Stephenville, mm -hmm. but I still have some, uh, a brother-in-law and an uncle, a few uncles that still live. So I don't get back there as much as I, as yeah. I used to. Were you, were you close to your, your dad? Uh, very much so. My, yeah. my dad uh, was really one of my heroes. Yeah. Uh, he uh, taught me how to work hard, had mm -hmm. a, a strong work ethic, yeah. uh, worked two jobs for as long as I can remember, yet he always managed to be at our school events, yeah. you know, whether it was athletic or right, otherwise. Dad. Uh, dad was, all, I don't know how he pulled it off. I, I never did ask him, <laughs> and I wish I had. Yeah. Um, but he taught me uh, the value of putting in a hard day's work. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. value of loving your kids. And oh, yeah. Loving your family. Yeah. So my wife and I, we have five grandkids now, and uh, yeah. it, we're having a time of our life with them. I'm, I bet you, I bet you, you probably spoil all five of them. We try as hard as we can. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, uh, if you could, if you can net it all out, rubber meets the road, what's the one thing that your dad taught you that you, that you use every day of your life? Well, I, it's a combination of what dad taught me and what I think is growing, I had the experience to grow up in West Texas. And my wife says, hey, they took, we took the boy out of West Texas, but we didn't take the West Texas out of the boy. Right, right, right. And, and so there's some <laughs> values of, of honoring people, of respecting people of uh, seeing people as human beings, mm -hmm. no matter if they're the richest people that you come in contact with or mm -hmm. the poorest people you come in contact with. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a God-given value built into them. Mm -hmm. And so dad always, dad had friends uh, up and down the, uh, the spectrum of life. Right, right, right. And, uh, and, and we were around them as kids growing up, so. So that, so that principle, and it became a principle with you, yeah. that principle uh, put you in the exact place at the exact time for an opportunity like CCA, because yeah. that's how you view people. And so, and I, I've thought about that. I hadn't really thought much about it, except in the last few years, mm -hmm. how my growing up years helped shape what I'm doing right now, and mm -hmm. that is caring uh, and loving people. Yeah. You know, my, my mom uh, worked for, for, in San Angelo for a long time, worked for an organization similar to CCA. It didn't do quite as much, but one of her jobs was to make sure that families had food stamps. Mm -hmm. And there's always a time period where a family applies for those stamps and the time they actually get them. Right. And mom would come home and open up our uh, cupboards, yeah. and she start putting groceries in there. I said, Mom, what, what are you doing? Yeah. She said, well, these families <sighs> need help. And I was a teenage boy. I said, Mom, but those are my Cheerios, Mom. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, don't right, give that right, away. Right, right. And, but but so, for, so the combination of what Dad taught us as to value the human life and Mom being such a servant of people, mm -hmm. I think back on that now, sure. and I think, well, the, that helped shape who yeah. I am today. So your whole so. life, God has prepared you for this moment. Yeah. And will this moment take you to retirement? Uh, I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping that's that's kind of my plan. Yeah. Is yeah. that uh, the, and that's what I told the board <laughs> that I'd give them my. I'll be 65 in June, mm -hmm. and but I told them I'd like to work. I don't have many hobbies other than work. Yeah. So I told them I'd work you know, into my 70, early 70s and yeah. kind of fade off into the sunset someplace. Yeah, so you're, so you guys are about to uh, uh, <clears throat> have your 50th? 
uh, anniversary. Right. So tell me the tell me the history of CCA. It's well, I love telling the story. Great. Uh-huh. Thank you. I didn't set you up for that question. I know you asked it on your own, but so it's going to cost me a lot more than that. I know. I know. I here, I was, here. There you go. There you go. Um, so there's a group hold, of men and women. Hold on a second. <laughs> take it anyway, aren't you? Uh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. You probably owe me a lot more, but I'm going to settle on 10. <laughs> the camera isn't facing this direction. <laughs> so there's a group of men and women on February 22nd, 1973. It was a Thursday evening over in Flower Mound, Ridgecrest Drive in Flower Mound. And they gathered simply to, to study the Bible. They didn't gather to start an organization. And they studied scripture like Matthew 25, where Jesus says, if you care for the least of these, it's as if you're caring for me. If you visit, if you clothe, if you give them water, food, it's as if you're caring for me, Jesus says. And they studied the story of the Good Samaritan, where Jesus is asked, so who's my neighbor? And he gives this great story, this great illustration. Most of us are familiar with the story of the Good Samaritan. It's the Samaritan who offers the help to the half-beaten, left for dead man. And uh, and, and it was the hated Samaritan, you know, the Jews and the Samaritan didn't get along at all. At the end of that study, uh, and we have a 60-page document written about that start by Tom Duffy. That's what he left, the founder of CCA. It's what he left us, one of the things he left us. I have read and reread that that document many, many times. He says, it was as if we were reading those Bible words for the very first time. Mm -hmm. I truly believe, Terry, that it was a movement of the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. that happened in that living room uh, in Flower Mount. And they said, hey, we've got to do something. We, we've got to, we can't just take this, you know, most of us just take Bible learning in our head. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, they took it to heart. Yeah, well, the Bible says you got to be doers of the word, exactly. not doers only. You yeah, know? and so they, they did. One month later, they were already collecting food, collecting clothes for family. Mm-hmm. Uh, six months later, in November of 73, they were already an official 501c3 organization. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he chronicles... You know, it's a, a nonprofit with no money at the beginning, and so he chronicles the ups and downs of those first few years, how yeah. tough it was. Yeah. Um, and, and over the years, though, it has remained true. CCA has remained true to its uh, faith uh, base, basic service. Ba- uh, we're doing it because God has uh, asked us to do that kind of service, and yeah. so uh, it has remained true to that. Yeah. What's the uh, biggest challenge that you have? So, uh, so well, let me back up a minute. So, CCA, uh, you, you're you're really all about um, he- helping the needy, mm-hmm. whether it's uh, people in poor health or people that are financially burdened or people that are living on the streets. Right. 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 So, what's the the biggest challenge that you have? Um, it, it's really not. Well, there's two. One, because of current economic conditions, the number of families that we're helping is just growing every day. Right. And, and there's uh, a great example. The state of Texas opened up a, a rent relief portal um, not long ago, and they intended it to last about three weeks. Mm-hmm. It lasted uh, a day and a half yeah. because it was overrun with the number of requests, yeah. they quickly ran out of money. Yeah. So there's, first challenge is the growing number of people who need help yeah. in the current economic situation that we're in. The second <clears throat> is, and, and I think it might even be a bigger challenge, is that we live, most of us live in these, what I call shiny suburbs of Dallas, mm-hmm. and we don't really <clears throat> see the need that yeah. exists, yeah. And, and thus we don't respond. Right. And so that's, I think uh, the second challenge that we have. What is the need? What's, what is the greatest need? Uh, it's a combination of uh, of uh, people needing uh, needing jobs, needing jobs that will pay for uh, for them to survive. Yeah. There are 94,000 households in Denton County who are working households mm-hmm. who don't make enough money to meet the basic needs of life. Mm-hmm. 
there are 111,000, more than 111,000 people in Denton County who North Texas Food Bank has said they are food insecure. And what the, that's just a fancy word for meaning that they don't know where the next meal is going to come from. Yeah. 100, more than 111,000 people. That's do. overwhelming, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's yeah. the size of Louisville. Yeah. Yeah. Where does, the, uh, where does your support come from, your financial support? It, it comes from the community. It comes from people who have recognized that uh, when the question is asked, who is my neighbor, they can see the need. Yeah. And so it comes from individuals. It comes from foundations. It comes from local government entities yeah. uh, with their, some of their block grant money that they, that they give to CCA. So we have a variety of different sources. It comes from local churches mm -hmm. who see the need yeah. and uh, help fund some of the efforts that we do. I would think that uh, the local church would, would, would get really involved in this type of program because it would give them relief from ha trying to have a program as the one that, as the one that, you, that you work. Exactly. There, there's a lot of families who knock on the doors of churches, and yeah. um, not, not only do we have the, the financial means to help them, but we also have the social workers, the, their expertise yeah. in how to vet and, and how to help. So someone may come in and need help with the, the, their electric bill, mm -hmm. uh, but we can make them aware of not only do we have um, funds to help you with that, mm -hmm. but we also have groceries, uh, yeah. a pantry, the largest client, a client choice pantry in Denton County, that we can help you offset some of that expense at the grocery store. Yeah. If, and so, yeah. Uh, Gil, uh, you don't mind if I call you Gil, do you? I don't mind that at all. Well, are you from the East Coast? Uh, no, I'm from right here, buddy. Okay, are you? Okay. Yeah, well, I was going to call you Gil anyway, but it's, it's nice to say, you know. A lot of people that I meet from the East Coast call me Gil. That's why I ask. So yeah. I didn't know. I thought, maybe you, got, thought maybe you took a wrong turn or something. I have taken many wrong uh, turns, yeah. but that's not one of them. <laughs> but I bet you've been called a lot of things in your lifetime. So Gil's pretty good, right? <laughs> I'll take you'll, it. You'll take I'll it, take it, yeah. <laughs> you'll take it. So uh, how do you... How do you, if somebody comes in, they need financial assistance, um, how do you decide whether they really need financial assistance? Well, there's some documents that we ask of them, uh, and we ask, uh, is, is there a crisis? Is there really a need? And so uh, whether it's a loss of job, uh, whether it's an illness, uh, whatever the case might be, uh, but we ask for some financial documents. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole list. In fact, there, the list is on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, and so someone who looks in, for help from us uh, can look on our website and come in prepared yeah. with those documents. And yeah. that's what helps us. But a caseworker does that first intake process, sits down with the family, uh, looks at those documents, helps us helps assess yeah. uh, whether there's a, a need there. And and. You know, I get asked a lot of times, are you really helping the people that really need help? Yeah. And, y yes. Right. Yes, we are. Right. And, and right. you know, there are uh, sometimes people try to take advantage of systems like that, but that is far, far and away the, mi the minority of people. Uh, yeah. Most people who come in do need help. Yeah. I, so, uh, Gilbert, it's, it's obvious that you have a very tender heart. Uh, a love for people, a love for serving. Uh, how do you go home? I mean, you live and breathe this, and you see so many families that have needs, and uh, uh, single moms, single dads, uh, uh, kids that just need to eat. Yeah. How do you leave it behind when you go home? Well, it's, it's not easy, and it's probably worked on me more than I thought it was going to. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know if it's because of old age or because of the issues that I deal with during the day, but I wake up in the middle of the night yeah. and think about those things, and those are things that keep me up at night. Yeah. Um, Does you your know, wife ever say, would you please stop thinking about that? <laughs> well, the, the unfortunate thing is that I, for her, I have a home office, and we're empty nesters, and I don't have a lot of hobbies. I've already mentioned that. So yeah. I tend to work a lot. Uh, I blame that on dad. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, going back to dad's. Uh, I would say working. your only hobby is eating yeah. barbecue. Because uh, you do that well. I do that very well. <laughs> and I do it well here, and I do it well <laughs> right wherever here, I am wherever in the state of Texas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I am a barbecue fan. Yeah, yeah definitely. Gil, what, uh, what's the one thing that you like most about your job? Uh, you know, there's always something different happening. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I don't welcome the, the, the different challenges that come my way. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'll have two, three things that I want to get done during the day, but I, I get interrupted. And it could be anything from uh, helping put together the budget for next year, mm -hmm. or maybe a family needs to be prayed with, mm -hmm. and anything in between. Yeah. And so uh, there's a book that I've read recently that says, uh, the title of it is Nonprofits Are Messy. And they are. There, there yeah. is not a, um, a formula yeah. for how to successfully lead because every day is different yeah. in a nonprofit world. Yeah. If somebody wrote you a check for $10 million oh. today, what's the first thing you would do? Barbecue. No. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue. Not barbecue. Right. Uh, if somebody know. walked in your office and handed you a check for $10 million, what would you do? We need some upgrades in that building. <laughs> have you been in our building? Oh, we, we need some upgrades yeah. done. And so yeah. I, I think part of that $10 million would help to upgrade. I mentioned our five grandkids. I would want our five grandkids, their college education to be well taken care of or whatever they want to do for yeah. higher ed. Yeah. Um, we value education. My wife's a retired school teacher. My two daughters were in education before yeah. they were, now they're stay at home moms. Yeah. But, now, uh, what would you do if somebody wrote you a check for $10 million for CCA? Oh, um, now we're talking. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we have, so in our strategic plan that we're developing right now, we're looking at how do we continue to serve the people, uh, for instance, in the colony in Little Elm, yeah. who, and, and transportation for, that, for this demographic is, a, is an issue. So what if we set up remote sites at some of these locations? Sure. And, uh, yeah. and I, I would love to be able to do that, to bring out um, food trucks out at the same time yeah. with a social worker who takes the request and can do that intake process. Sure. And we have a food truck there. At, and so I see these little CCAs Kind of sprouting up all over, yeah. all over Denton County. Yeah. So, five years from now, where do you hope CCA is? I, I hope we're doing some of that. That's what you want to yeah. do. Yeah. So yeah. If I'm ready for somebody. I'll look right in the camera. Somebody to write me a ten million dollar check. We'll yeah. take it. Yeah. 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 So we can do that. Uh, the figures that I said, the hundred, the hundred eleven thousand people. That's all over Denton County who are yeah. facing hunger. Yeah. Uh, that, that includes 36,000 children yeah. who don't know where the next meals come. The, yeah. Those are startling statistics. These, yeah. are, these are people who are our neighbors, Terry. Yeah, sure. And, and, and you don't think of it, like you said earlier, most of us, we don't see it, so we don't think about it. Right. And yet it's still real. It, it's very real. Yeah. Uh, th those aren't numbers I made up. Those come from national organizations. Yeah, yeah. You have a hard job. Oh, it's a it's a great job. Yeah, but it's a hard no, one. Right? No, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a great I'm job. Glad, I'm glad I cook barbecue, and I'm glad you do that. <laughs> okay, well, so uh, I'm glad you do barbecue too. <laughs> <laughs> so your 50th anniversary is coming up. What's the plan? We're going to throw a big party in the community. We have 700 people there. Um, Where's it going to be? It's going to be at the Embassy Suites in Grapevine. That's the only base that we could find that was big enough to hold 700 people. Yeah, uh, that's near here. And uh, we've got the choir from uh, Westside Baptist. I don't know if you've ever heard them sing. Mm. Oh, it's an incredible choir. Wow. They're going to open up the evening for mm -hmm. us. It's just going to be a great time. Yeah. So you're in Old Town. I'm in Old Town. And there's Old Town is being uh, revitalized. Every day. Now, those of us that are in the retail business, we can't wait. I mean, it's because it, it, it's going to bring in a lot of, lot of people, a lot of foot traffic. I mean, I got... 213 apartments going in next door, another 300 down, right down on the other side of you, which mm -hmm. is right across the street. So for me, it's great. But for you, for a 5013C, it may be a little bit different story. How do you view that? Well, you know, uh, the remaking of areas like we're in it has its pros and has its cons. Sure. Um, I think they call it gentrification. Mm -hmm. And so that not everything is positive with that. Yeah. Um, and and I'm just not talking about our property. I'm talking about the effects that it has on the community that lives here. Mm -hmm. uh, those rates go up. Everything goes up for them. And in many cities uh, that are not, they don't do it well. Uh, it winds up driving those people away from that, from those areas. Can't afford it anymore. Can't afford it anymore. Yeah. And so. Um, 
So, you know, I, I love new and exciting, mm -hmm. uh, but there's some mixed feelings when I see things like that happening. How will that uh, affect you? Uh, well, you know, we, we've, had, we've had offers for our property. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know what we're going to do with that at this, at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we want to, we are in a location where we take, where our, the, the people that we serve are, we serve 64% of the people we served in 2022 were from Louisville. And so um, we're in a good location. Yeah. So, so if, if we move, We've got to find a location that serves our families the best. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that I have not seen my invitation to this uh, anniversary party. Uh, I, you show up and I will walk you in personally. <laughs> okay. I'll escort you in. Yeah, Gil, let me ask you this, because you, uh, you work directly with the city of Louisville, the management of the city of, of Louisville. Have you ever worked with a city that's... Uh, that's more hospitable than our city. Uh, they do a great job. Everybody, well, maybe TJ is kind of, no. Even, uh, <laughs> I know you're good friends with him. Yeah, TJ and I, uh, yeah, we go, we go back. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's a great uh, organization. Uh, Claire Powell and Isn't she her the team. Yes, I love yeah. working with them. Yeah. And so it's been Marichal. really good. Yes, been, yeah, uh, economic development that yeah, she does, yeah. A great yeah. asset to us, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. What, in our closing minute, and that's where we are, and I wish we weren't because I have so many. I got a, uh, I got a, about 10 other questions oh, no. that I need to ask you, so <laughs> we'll have to have you back. But uh, what's the one thing you would like for our, our viewers to, what, what would you like to leave them with concerning CCA? Yeah, you know, I, part of it I've already said, but the fact that uh, if we open our eyes, if we truly see what's happening in our community, not only are we building apartment complexes and, and redoing the city, uh, but there's a growing need in our community. There's 30-something 30 30 something people, new people coming to Denton County every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, not all of those are wealthy people. Sure. And so with that comes growing needs and thus the need for, um, to provide financially for these families. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think the resources are already here. Yeah. We just need to open our eyes and make our hearts tender enough to care for them. Yeah. Gil, yeah. I'm so glad you're here. You've become yeah. a good friend. Yeah. of mine and the restaurants, and I appreciate you. You're, you're the perfect fit for CCA. You're doing a wonderful work, and people talk about it all the time. Thank you. Uh, Terry, take us, buddy. Thanks, Terry. Thank you.